I have not been this excited about a sneaker release in years. What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm counting down the top 10 best sneaker releases left in 2022. But first, let's talk business. And I wore my business hat specifically so you guys would know that I mean business. Is this just the word business taped to a hat? Well, to be honest, it's none of your... Okay, getting into the actual sponsorship. Some of the best sneakers that have come out over the last decade have been collaborations with artists like Cause and Virgil Abloh. But these sneaker collaborations aren't always just really great looking sneakers, they can also be pretty decent investments as well. I mean, if I were to go full business mode on you right now, it's really just supply and demand. You've got something that's highly desired and limited, and then you've got a bunch of people that want that highly desired limited thing, and because there are so many more of these people out there, the price of this thing goes up. And just like some popular sneaker marketplaces out there saw an opportunity with sneakers, Sneakers, the sponsor of today's video, Masterworks, sees an opportunity with art. The great thing about Masterworks is that it makes investing in contemporary art accessible to everyone, not just millionaires. And I'm not just talking about any old random artists, I'm talking about people like Banksy and Basquiat and Picasso. Some of the greatest and most influential artists of all time who produced art that is incredibly valuable. And so what Masterworks does is allow you to invest in a portion of these pieces of art so that you can enjoy the potential benefits of owning a Basquiat or a Banksy without having to shell out the insane, probably multi-million dollar price of buying the whole piece. Essentially, if I were to put it in terms of food, which is my favorite thing to do, it means you're buying a slice of pizza and not the whole pizza, but you still get to taste the pizza and enjoy it. And now you guys, my viewers, can get priority access to the Masterworks platform by clicking the link in the top of the description below. And by doing that, you can join the 380,000 other members who are revolutionizing the art market. So huge thank you to Masterworks for sponsoring today's video and also helping me grab this awesome hat. And with all that being said, let's dive right back into it. So I did a video very similar to this at the end of last year talking about the sneakers that I was most excited about in 2022. And what's crazy is that a lot of those releases already happened. They dropped in the beginning of the year and I was sitting around thinking, well, what's next? What's left? So I decided to do some digging and look into the sneakers that were coming out for the rest of the year because we still have like eight months left or I guess seven months left by the time this video comes out. There's some really insane stuff that I'm actually even more excited about than I was last time I did this video. In fact, for the top few sneakers on this list, first First of all, I didn't even know that they were releasing when I did the last video. And second of all, these shoes are some of the most insane sneaker releases of the last couple years. I mean, these are big, heavy hitters. It's crazy. So without further ado, let's dive right into the top 10 list. So I know I said this list would be a top 10 list, but I do want to start things off with an honorable mention, and that shoe is the Air Jordan 1 Heritage. So the reason this shoe is an honorable mention and not part of the top 10 list is because I just think there are 10 sneakers that deserve those spots a little bit more than this one. But this shoe is still awesome and still deserves to be in this video, at least in some capacity. And so here it is, the Air Jordan 1 Heritage. This is a shoe that features sort of a white and red color scheme. It's almost a reverse bread color scheme. And the colorway of this shoe is reminiscent of the Travis Scott fragments that dropped last year, but is actually inspired by an unreleased Air Jordan 1 sample from 1985. Now that shoe was blue and this shoe is red, so it's a different color, but the color blocking is the same, and it's a pretty clean looking sneaker. And obviously I have a pair early in hand, so I have already dropped a review on this sneaker, so if you guys want to check that out, there will be a link at the top of the screen and in the description below. But not only that, I'm actually giving this shoe away. Entering this giveaway is really easy. All you need to do is be subscribed to the channel and comment something in the comment section down below. I saw in the last video a lot of people were commenting something. I guess that's a very literal approach to entering the giveaway, but hey, it still works. And if you're already subscribed, then that's all you need to do. Just comment something down below. But now that we've got the honorable mention out of the way, let's get right into the top 10. Coming in at number 10 is the Nike Air Max Scorpion. So I know some of you are probably disappointed with my number 10 pick and are wondering why a GR shoe is on the list. But the reason I put this shoe on the list is because I think this shoe might be the most technologically advanced sneaker on this list. Plus, in my opinion, this shoe looks awesome. It looks so crazy. So as you can tell from these images, this shoe is a brand new Air Max silhouette. It's not really like anything else that we've seen before from Nike. While yes, this shoe does seem to take some design cues from the Nike Vapor Max and the Nike Vapor Max Plus, it is truly a brand new silhouette. The upper of the shoe seems to come in some variation of Nike Flyknit. I don't know if it's classic Flyknit that we're used to or maybe it's some new formulation. I have no idea. But really, the upper of the shoe is not the most exciting and interesting part of the Nike Air Max Scorpion. That, of course, is the crazy midsole and outsole tooling. So this shoe almost looks like someone put on some football cleats and decided to stand on some bubble wrap and that became a shoe. And honestly, I know it's crazy looking, but I really, really dig it. As you can see, the shoe looks like it features a form of VaporMax cushioning. However, unlike the standard VaporMax models, it's not directly underneath your foot. And instead, you're almost sort of lifted off of the cushioning in a way that I've never really seen before. In fact, it actually looks like you can look right through the midsole, which is really one of the many reasons I'm excited about checking out this shoe. I just want to feel how it feels under 
your foot. I wanna know what they were going for and see if it's comfortable. Plus, it just looks like they pumped this midsole with air. That midsole is thick and I'm here for it, I'm excited. But other than the styling and the tagline, tomorrow's comfort today, we don't really know much about the Nike Air Max Scorpion. It is supposedly supposed to release in September. No one's really sure about that release date, but that's what we heard at the end of last year, so I'm sure it's changed. But hey, whenever Nike decides to drop this sneaker, I'm here for it and I'm definitely gonna be grabbing a pair and reviewing it for you guys. Coming in at number nine is the New Balance 990 V6. Over the last couple years, the New Balance 990 V5 has earned a spot as probably one of my most worn sneakers ever, and I literally keep it by my door and wear it almost every single day. It's just one of the most wearable shoes ever. It's crazy. It might not be the flashiest, it might not be the absolutely most comfortable shoe in the world, but in my opinion, it's the perfect mix of looks and comfort, and it just goes with everything. And so when Teddy Santis, one of the creative directors at New Balance and also the founder of ALD, leaked the New Balance 990 V6, I was incredibly excited. Again, this shoe is another GR, and again, this is a shoe that after it releases is probably not going to be very difficult to get, but it's not about the hype. This shoe is incredible, it looks great, and I'm so excited to just rock it every day. So while we don't know a huge amount about the 990 V6, we have seen images of the shoe, and based on these images, it looks like the shoe isn't a total overhaul of the 990 V5, but rather a very clean refinement of the shoe. It looks like the 990 V6 will feature fuel cell cushioning in the midsole, which should make it very comfortable underfoot. Of course, looking at the upper, it just looks like it's going to be a very well padded upper, just like the 990 V5, which means it's going to be very soft on the top of your foot. And yes, while this shoe is still very much a dad shoe vibe, it looks great, and I love the sculpting that they did to the midsole of the shoe. It really made it look so much cleaner and also a lot more futuristic. And honestly, if you haven't tried New Balance yet, which is crazy to me because I think most people have tried New Balance even just growing up, grabbing pairs of Payless, it's one of those brands that's coming up and it's definitely worth looking into. And it's a brand that I am fully behind, and if they ever want to reach out for a collaboration, Ring my phone, <laughs> I'd love to. So even though we've known about this shoe since pretty much June 2021, there is still no release date for this sneaker, but I think people are expecting this shoe to drop before the end of 2022. Let's hope it's sooner rather than later. At number eight is the Air Jordan 2 Chicago. It's no secret that Jordan brand is really pushing the Air Jordan 2 this year. In fact, most Jordan brand collaborations are on the Air Jordan 2. One of the shoes that was really, really high in my last most anticipated sneakers list of 2022 were the Union LA Air Jordan 2s. In fact, I was able to grab a pair through their website on release day, which I did not expect. Shout out to Roscoe, by the way. I was on his stream for that drop, and I think it was just a stream luck, because I never get lucky on Union's website, but I did last week, and it was sick. But whether you've been a fan of the Air Jordan 2 from the beginning, or you're a new fan because of all the collaborations, the Air Jordan 2 Chicago is the original Air Jordan 2 colorway, and if you want a pair of Air Jordan 2s that's a classic, this is about as classic as it gets. What's interesting about the Air Jordan 2 is that it's always kind of been the black sheep of the Air Jordan line. It wasn't one of Michael Jordan's favorite shoes. In fact, he almost left Nike because of that shoe. But it's crazy because this shoe was a huge performance improvement over the Air Jordan 1, and it was also made in Italy, so it was very high quality. I think the reason a lot of people aren't huge fans of this shoe is one, because of course Michael Jordan wasn't the biggest fan of this shoe, but two, because there just hasn't been a huge amount of really great colorways over the last couple decades. I mean, there have been winners, but it's not like the colorways that we get on the Air Jordan 1s or the Air Jordan 3s. It's not really a shoe that has like that much oomph behind it, if you know what I mean. That being said, it's still a classic Air Jordan model, it's still a clean looking sneaker, and it's still something you should definitely check out if you're a Jordan fan. And uh, I think a lot of people will be hyped on this shoe, in fact, way more hyped than they were the last time it came out, because this is the year of the Air Jordan 2. From what I can remember, the last time that we got the OG Air Jordan 2 in the Chicago colorway was back in 2010. So this is the first time in almost 12 years that we've gotten this shoe, and honestly, I feel like it's overdue. It's a shoe that a lot of people are excited about, and the good news is, it is releasing this year, but but sadly, towards the end of the year, around the holiday season. We're not exactly sure when, but sometime in like the October to December range. Coming in at number seven is the Air Jordan 1 Yellow Toe. So this is really a shoe that we've been looking forward to since pretty much 2018, 2019. It's a new colorway of the Air Jordan 1 that we've never had before, and we've been teased with images of this shoe for years. In fact, in 2019, people were so sure that this shoe was coming out, factories started making fake pairs in anticipation of the actual retail release of this shoe. Turns out, never happened, so all the pairs on the market were fake, but uh, it was definitely something that uh, tricked a lot of people. It does look like, though, this shoe is finally releasing officially from Jordan brand, not just from the fake factories, um, and it's a shoe that I think a lot of people are excited 
excited about because it's a very clean colorway and while yellow is not the most wearable color in the world compared to other colors, it's still a shoe that I think a lot of people will use as at least an accent piece. I just really like the color blocking on this shoe. I love the shattered backboard sort of bread toe color blocking. I think you could switch out that accent color with really any other color and it would work. In fact, Jordan Brand has pretty much done that at this point and this is one of those colors that we haven't gotten yet and I think is uh, long overdue. Now I think if this shoe had released back in 2019 when it was first rumored to release, it would have been just a standard Air Jordan 1 release that people would have been excited about but not overly hyped about. Now in 2022, even though the hype of the Air Jordan 1 has slowed down a little bit, we've had such a long build up to this release, I think people are even more excited than they were back in 2019. And as of right now, it looks like the Air Jordan 1 Yellow Toe, or Taxi, we're not sure exactly what the name is going to be yet, is going to release on August 13th, 2022. Next up at number 6, we've got the Nike Kobe 6 Mambasita. So this colorway first leaked as a colorway to celebrate the life of Kobe and Gigi Bryant. And uh, unfortunately, because Kobe's estate decided to not work with Nike over the last couple years, we never got an official release of this shoe. And to be honest, while I don't know the situation, I do think Vanessa Bryant did the right thing for her and her family. She stepped away from the brand because she didn't agree with exactly what they were doing. And now she's going back to work with Nike on her terms, which I think is awesome. And it looks like we might finally get the release of this shoe. Apparently part of this new deal between Vanessa Bryant and Nike is that the proceeds from this release, which is now called the Mamba Forever release, will go directly to the Mamba and Mamba Sita Sports Foundation. Visually, the design of this Kobe 6 Pro is stunning. It comes in this beautiful black and white. It features the late Kobe Bryant and Gigi Bryant's names on the heel in gold. And this colorway really seems like a solid tribute to two incredible people. There's no official release date for the Kobe 6 Pro Tro Mamba Sita Sweet 16, but expect a release in the coming weeks. Coming in at number five is the Amaman Yer Air Jordan 2. So like I said, this year is the year of the Air Jordan 2s. And the way that Jordan brand is really pushing the silhouette is by dropping a lot of Air Jordan 2 collaborations. And so far, every Amaman Yer and Air Jordan collaboration has been excellent. The Air Jordan 3s were incredible, my favorite sneaker of last year, and the Air Jordan 1s were also a pretty solid release. And now we're finally getting the release of the Amamanier Air Jordan 2s, which actually feature a lot of the same details that the Air Jordan 1s had. This Air Jordan 2 comes with a cracked leather upper that comes in sort of a creamy off-white color. You've got very dark maroon hits on the heel of the shoe. You've got a quilted sock liner, which I think is incredible, as well as a snakeskin midsole. Now I've said this before about this shoe and really any shoe with a wrapped midsole. I'm not really a huge fan of when you wrap leather or really any kind of material around a foam midsole. I feel like unless it's molded in place like a rubber exterior like you have in the Yeezy 350s, it just won't stay in place forever. Like the leather is gonna, you know, pull up at certain parts or maybe tear at certain parts and it's just gonna ruin the look of the shoe. Right out of the box, the shoe is gonna look incredible, but then once you've worn it for a while and you really scuff up that snakeskin, is it gonna peel off? I don't know. I guess it's kind of a minor gripe. It's not really that big of a deal, but at the end of the day, if you're spending however much you're spending on this pair of sneakers, you want it to last as long as it possibly can. That being said, it's still a great looking sneaker. That Air Jordan 1 Amamanier color blocking on this shoe translates very, very well, and it's definitely a shoe that I think a lot of people will be going for. This cracked leather look just seems to work better on the silhouette. I don't know what it is, maybe I'm crazy, I don't know, but I just feel like this is a cleaner look and maybe this is a shoe that should have released instead of the Air Jordan 1s. But with all that being said, it looks like we don't have that much longer to wait to grab this shoe because this shoe is slated to release on April 29th of 2022. Next up at number four is the DJ Khaled We The Best Air Jordan 5 collection. So for the last couple years, DJ Khaled has been working directly with Jordan brand and receiving pretty much every single Jordan sneaker that's released and some friends and family pair that no one else gets. And because of his devotion to the brand and his celeb status, Jordan Brand decided to give him his own collection of Air Jordan 5s that are actually releasing to the public. He did already have some Air Jordan 3s, but from what I can tell, they were only released to friends and family and never actually saw a public release. This time around though, DJ Khaled has created five different Air Jordan 5 colorways as part of the We The Best collection. However, it's unknown which colorways will be dropping and which colorways are reserved for friends and family. The five colorways that are part of this collection are all seemingly Miami themed. They come in creams and oranges and pinks and purples and teals and all sorts of colors that you associate with Miami in the summer. Of course, all of these sneakers feature the We The Best branding on the heel of the shoe in place of the Jordan brand Jumpman logo and also feature quilted sock liners, which I'm always a fan of. The one thing I'm noticing, at least on some of the colorways from the collection, is that the midfoot netting on some of these colors is actually removed in favor of other materials. The teal colorway features a suede panel instead of the netting. The orange colorway features some sort of fabric with like a glossy lining. I'm not sure 
exactly what it is, but it looks interesting. And I would say all around with all five of these colorways, it's a pretty solid collection of Air Jordan 5s. And I think DJ Khaled is definitely deserving of this collaboration because he's been such a big proponent of the brand. And of course, being the guy who's popularized the phrase, still in the meeting, I think he's more than deserving of some Air Jordan 5s, which I'm sure he'll post a bunch of still in the meeting videos about. As I'm sure you expected, there is no official release date for these shoes yet, but they are slated to drop in 2022. Coming in at number three is the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 Low Reverse Mocha. So Travis Scott seems to have a love affair with brown colored Jordan 1s, and honestly, I think we're all here for it. This reverse mocha colorway of the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1s is a colorway that we've seen leaked for the last couple years, and I think now, sometime in 2022, we're finally going to be getting pairs of these in hand. Like most of his other collaborations with Jordan brand, Travis Scott did add the backwards Nike swoosh on the lateral side of this sneaker. However, on this reverse mocha colorway, the Nike swoosh comes in sort of a sail or off-white colorway, which actually matches the laces and the midsole of the shoe. And of course, the main material used on this shoe is the brown nubuck that can be found on the toe and on the midfoot of the sneaker, accented by white leather on the overlays. Now, while this shoe will inevitably be popular because it's a Travis Scott collaboration sneaker, I think the fact that this shoe also features some pretty interesting color blocking will also make other people who might not be fans of Travis Scott drawn to this sneaker as well. I've got to be honest, personally, it's not my favorite Travis Scott collaboration to date, but it is a good looking sneaker and it's definitely one that I will be going for if I get the opportunity. And it's kind of crazy to me that before Travis Scott's collaborations with Jordan brand, brown Jordan 1s were not really a thing. They had released before, but they were never really the it thing. People didn't really want them like that. But of course, when you tie the Travis Scott name to a product, that thing sells like crazy. And that means that brown Jordan 1s are now incredibly popular and in vogue. Seriously, it's not a bad looking sneaker. It's something that I am looking forward to, but it's not my favorite sneaker release of the year. I mean, obviously not. It's not number one on the list. And currently the release date of this shoe is rumored to be in July. Next up at number two, we've got the return of the Adidas Easy 350 Turtle Dove. This is a shoe that I never ever would have guessed that we were gonna get a restock of. I thought the Turtle Dove was ancient history for Kanye West and Adidas, just like the 750s, which I really don't think we're ever gonna get a restock of. This shoe I thought was in the vault and that was it. But apparently that's not the case. It looks like we're actually getting a restock or I guess a remade version of the Adidas Easy 350 Turtle Dove, the very first 350 to ever release. When this shoe first released back in 2016, people weren't really sure how to feel about this shoe. I remember at Flight Club, the shoe was selling for like 600 bucks for like the first couple months after it dropped. But slowly as the hype started to build, the price started going up and up and up. And now in 2022, you can grab a pair of these brand new for around 1800 to $2,000. But the good news is for those of us who missed out on the release, like myself, it looks like Adidas is finally bringing this shoe back in seemingly the same makeup as the original. And we have a second chance to grab this shoe for retail, which really blows my mind. I mean, I guess this release wasn't completely out of the realm of possibility. I mean, obviously, because it is re-releasing, but we had a lot of other classic 350 V2 colorways restocking and re-releasing. So I guess it's not really that big of a surprise that Adidas decided to retro their most classic 350 ever. Now, based on these images and all of the other images that I've seen of the 350 Turtle Doves, it looks like this restock or re-release of the shoe is coming back in its standard makeup. Nothing really has been changed. I don't think they're changing the padding on this shoe or unfortunately not even the sizing, which is kind of a bummer because this shoe does fit very big. And unfortunately, it looks like the midsole of this shoe is still going to be painted, which was a bummer because it wore off very quickly. That was like one of the biggest problems with the 350 V1s and that's why it's so hard to find a good used pair of these sneakers. That being said, the Turtle Dove colorway is by far the most coveted and most popular 350 V1 colorway. And because of that, it's so exciting that this shoe is finally coming back. But what's even crazier than that is that apparently this shoe is dropping in like the next week or two, which I feel like might not be true because we haven't heard too much about this release other than through leaks. But according to most sneaker websites, this shoe is apparently dropping before the end of April, which I find hard to believe, but it is possible. Personally, I feel like that's not going to happen because we haven't seen anything from Adidas about it. But at the same time, weirder things have happened. So it could happen. But if you're watching this video in May and the shoe still hasn't come out yet, I'm not surprised. And then finally at number one is the Air Jordan 1 Chicago Reimagined. I have not been this excited about a sneaker release in years. So we haven't gotten an actual Chicago Air Jordan 1 high release since 2015 which is kind of crazy because this is one of the most popular Air Jordan colorways of all time on one of the most popular Air Jordan silhouettes of all time. In fact, you can't see this, but I've actually got a painting of the Air Jordan 1 Chicago behind this camera. Let me grab it really quickly. Here we go. Shout out Adam Port for this awesome painting. This is a shoe that I like a lot. I shouldn't have taken this off the wall because now I got to get it back up there. 
While yes, the Air Jordan 1 bread is my favorite sneaker and colorway of all time, the Chicago Air Jordan 1s are a close second, at least in terms of colorway. So just the fact that we're getting a new release or an updated release of the Air Jordan 1 Chicago's is already exciting enough, but the fact that this updated release apparently, or I guess reimagined release, apparently is going to look like the 85 Air Jordan 1s or closer to the originals is so sick. I don't know if you know this, but since the release of the original Air Jordan 1 back in 1985, the Air Jordan 1 shape has changed over over time. It's not something that happened drastically at any one point, but it's something that slowly as they refined the look of the shoe and changed up the last that were used with this sneaker, the shape of the shoe just naturally changed. And the shape of the newer Air Jordan 1s that we have in 2022 are definitely different than the shape of the original Air Jordan 1s from 1985. And from what I can tell, this is one of the first few times that we're actually getting the Air Jordan 1 Chicago's in its original shape. Now I've gotta be honest, I don't wanna get too excited just yet until we actually see images of this shoe. All of the images that you've seen have been renderings or mock-ups of the sneaker. As you know, the shoe is called the reimagined Air Jordan 1 Chicago's, which means there could be some differences and apparently those differences are just that they're aging the midsole and making it more of a cream color and possibly aging different parts of the shoe which personally I'm fine with I guess but it's also possible that this shoe could look nothing like how we're hoping I mean that's a very real possibility it happens all the time with Jordan brand we have no way of knowing until they actually drop official images of this shoe but as of right now I'm just crossing my fingers I'm hoping because this is a release that I've wanted for so long and we're overdue it's been seven years give us a Chicago Jordan 1 and uh, it seems like that's what Jordan brands doing so I'm excited and in some other other good news, it looks like the release date of this shoe is not too far off. In fact, this shoe is supposed to drop on October 29th. And believe me when I tell you, I literally cannot wait for this release. This is the one shoe that I'm so excited about this year that uh, I'm going to have to grab multiple, multiple pairs. I'm talking like multiple pairs. <laughs> but with that, we pretty much wrap up the top 10 list for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on this list and which shoes you're most anticipating for the rest of 2022. So make sure to let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to enter my giveaway of the Heritage Air Jordan 1s. All you need to do to enter is subscribe and then comment something in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out the sponsor of today's video, Masterworks, and I'll see you all in the next one.